Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at a simple op amp circuit, which you can see on my breadboard. And the op amp that we're going to use is a TLC 272. It's made by Texas Instruments. You can see it right here. It's a dual op amp, and it's in an 8 pin dip package. Now, we're going to wire this op amp up as a unity gain voltage follower. So the transistor equivalent will be a emitter follower, and it has a very high input impedance. So if you have a device that puts out an AC signal, and the signal is small, and it's fragile because it has a high output impedance, then you want to buffer that signal, so the first thing you want to do is feed it into an amplifier that has a high impedance, so we don't uh, load it down, and we buffer it for further processing. So basically it's a high impedance to low impedance converter. Okay, here's my device that puts out a small AC signal, and the output impedance is 12k ohms, so if we put a load across our device of 12k ohms, so this would be the input impedance of an amplifier, we're going to lose half our signal by Ohm's law because we have 12k ohms of output impedance and a 12k load. We're going to get a voltage divider, so this point here will be half the signal. We're going to lose half the signal of our original uh, output. So generally we want to have a load of 10 times our output impedance, so our load should be about 120k ohms so we don't load down our signal. So to find out the output impedance of our device, we could do that using a scope. So we take our device and we hook it to all across the scope and we take an open circuit uh, a reading. So we take out this, this resistor. So we take, a, we take a reading and then we apply a pot across, across our uh, device and we turn the pot until our output drops down one half. Now when it does that, the value of this resistor will be the same value of our output impedance. So now we know the output impedance of our device, we could build an amplifier that has an input impedance 10 times the output impedance so we don't load down the AC signal. Okay, so this is the AC device that I'm going to use in this video. Now this is my son's guitar. I don't play guitar. So we have to measure the output impedance of the pickups on the guitar. Then we have to design our unity gain voltage follower circuit, our op amp circuit, to be 10 times output impedance of the pickup so we don't, we don't load down the signal coming out of this guitar. So we'll hook it up to the scope and we'll take a reading and we'll calculate the output impedance of this guitar. Okay, so here's my setup to measure the output impedance of my guitar. So here's the cable coming from my guitar. That's my guitar output and I have that plugged into a jack and that's connected to my scope and I have a 10 times probe on my scope so I'm not loading down the guitar. And I'm taking an open circuit reading of the guitar. You can see on the scope it's 200 millivolts. Now the load that I'm going to put across the scope instead of a pot, I have a decade box. So I'm putting the decade box across the output of the scope and the guitar. And I'm turning my thumb wheels and I'm decreasing the resistance until I get half the signal. And you can see half the signal is 100 millivolts. And on my decade box I got 12K. So the output impedance of my guitar is around 12K now it varies with, with frequency, depending what string I'm using. Also, there's different pickups on the guitar. So we're going to just ballpark it, so it's 12K-ish. So we have 12K impedance of our output of our guitar. So we'll need 120K ohm uh, resistance of our input to our amplifier, so we don't load down the signal of the guitar. Okay, so this is a very simple unity gain voltage follower, which you could build using an op amp. So the output of the op amp is fed into the inverting input, so they'll give us a unity gain output. And our signal is fed into pin 3, which is the non-inverting input. Now the non-inverting input has a very high impedance, so the input impedance of this amplifier, or this buffer, will be the shunt resistor from pin 3 to ground. So right now I have a 120k ohm resistor, so the input impedance will be 120k. If I replace this resistor with a 1 meg ohm, the input impedance will be a 1 meg ohm. So this will work, but we have one problem. We need a plus and minus power supply. So if we want to run this off batteries, we would need two 9-volt batteries. So I didn't want that. I want to run it on a single supply. So this is the circuit that I built on my breadboard, which you saw. So it's the same idea. We have the output of the op amp fed into the inverting input to give us a unity gain output. But now we have to bias the output to half VCC, so the output signal will swing above and below half VCC, or 4.5 volts. So we make a voltage divider. You can see two 22k ohm resistors. So at this point here we'll have 4.5 volts fed into pin 3 and that's going to force the output to 4.5 volts, half VCC. 
Now we feed our input through this 0.22 microfarad capacitor into pin 3, which has a very high input impedance. But we have this 220k ohm resistor fed over to this capacitor, which is an AC short. So the input impedance of this amplifier, this buffer, will be 220k because we have 220k ohm resistor and it's, it's shunting the ground. So this is the key component. So whatever input impedance that you want on this buffer amplifier, you just have to uh, substitute uh, the resistance and they'll give you your input impedance. So right now I'm using 220k because uh, most guitars have a range of 4k to 20k. So I made this 220k. So that's going to be the input impedance of this buffer. But you could change it. You could put a 1 megaohm resistor in here and you'll have an input impedance of 1 megaohm. So that's our key component. So you, you, you figure out the output impedance of your device, multiply it by 10, and then take that, that value of resistance and put it in here, and that will give you your input resistance of this buffer amplifier. Okay, I have my guitar jack plugged into my unity to gain voltage follower circuitry. And the input capacitor is small, 0.22 microfarads, because of the high input impedance. So we could get away with using electrolytic, and we could use a polypropylene or a polystyrene for good quality. So the output signal comes off this 10 microfarad capacitor. So now the signal coming out of here can be processed into further circuitry. And we don't have to worry about loading down the input signal from our guitar. Okay, to monitor the sound output of the buffer amplifier, which is connected to the guitar, I have a breakout board for a 35 millimeter jack. And I have that plugged into a USB sound card, external sound card, which you can see here. And you can plug that into your computer. Then you can set your default settings for sounds to look at this uh, USB sound card and we can actually monitor the sound coming out of the guitar. So I have the car guitar plugged into the jack, which is plugged into my buffer amplifier. Output of the, of the 3.5mm jack is connected up to my USB external sound card. And we'll hook up to my computer and we'll monitor some sounds. Okay, I have the output of my amplifier fed into my USB sound card, which is plugged into my computer. And I have it set up for default settings for the sound. So if I strum some strings on the guitar, you could hear it coming out of my computer speakers. So now if you have a set of good speakers on your computer, you could actually uh, practice guitar using your computer. Okay, so that was my little keep it simple rule of thumb circuit that you could build to extract data out of any audio device for further processing. So build up the circuit and you get started with your audio projects.